Hi guys and welcome to Autism Elements. In today's episode, I wanted to just take some time to review some of the resources that I utilize within my classroom or when working with students with disabilities. Especially if you're working in a self-contained classroom, I know how difficult it can be to address all the varying needs in your classroom. I know a lot of times we have gaps from students who are, you know, two grades below to three grades below and even sometimes four grades below and working with the different disabilities can be hard so i wanted to review some of the resources that can either tackle multiple levels or how you can utilize some of these things to help your student as a whole now i am going to preface that i know there's not enough time in the day but what i did learn from working in the self-contained classroom is that the more you front load work the easier it is to prepare and build a library resource that you can continue using throughout the years. So I'm gonna ask you guys to just bear with me if you're fairly new into this self-contained classroom and just take some of these tips and start applying them. Another tip that I wanna give you before we go into these resources is that I used to use a massive team to get this done. Number one, if you know any high school students or have any staff members who need uh, who have high school students and need community service hours, this is something great that you can ask them. Now be clear of the expectation of what you want from them, but you definitely could ask them to help you laminate, to cut, to add Velcro, and give them hours for that. So that's one tip. Number two, make some relationship with your assistant, build that relationship, and build a report with them because they can be a great asset. I had amazing assistants who I always tell them and I still hang out with them all the time, but they are phenomenal and they really helped me in building this resource. And I also used to take these home and I used to watch TV while I was cutting and laminating. Like I was always multitasking, especially my first three years. After that, things do get a little bit easier and you become a little bit more proficient in time management and seeing it. But again, use volunteers. There's parents that like, grandmas that like doing it. I mean, ask around and you never know who might help. All you have to do is ask, okay? So now I'm gonna start with showing you guys these little uh, letter vocabulary books that I have. And here's how I wanna show you some ideas on how you can utilize this within your classroom. Right now we have A through F. But there will be, um, this is a growing bundle, so you're gonna see a lot more. So this is a great time to get this resource because it's gonna be increasing in price in a few. But I wanna show you how you can use this within your classroom. So one of the biggest thing with working with students with disabilities is that visual representation goes a very long way. Um, it's not just about reading and building vocabulary, but it is also about building picture comprehension, which is truly the first steps to reading comprehension. So I absolutely love this resource because you can use it within your centers, you can use it, maybe your assistant can build that vocabulary and help the students build language. You can use this for kids who read. You can use it for kids who are learning and maybe they can point to it. You can describe it and build language by giving attributes of this particular vocabulary. And for those students who are nonverbal, you can also utilize by maybe creating it in a format. So I did bind it, but if you don't wanna do it this way, you can just keep them as flashcards and then put a couple, like I normally start with two choices and then add a third choice. And maybe depending if I wanna challenge my nonverbal students, I would add four choices and have them perceptively point to the vocabulary word you're requesting or maybe I would say it is green it has two antennas for the ear it has three fingers and it is from space so now guess what you're building you're building context clues guys so that is an easy way that you can do this and like I said I like binding them because I like to put them in my books uh, center but you can use this in many different areas if you're learning about the letter a maybe that's your letter of the week you might do this, right, in your whole group as you're working with your students. So that is one option that you can utilize these different vocabulary books, okay? The next thing I wanted to address, and again, I'm all about multitasking. We do not have enough time in the day to cover all the things we need to do. So we have to be a little bit smart about how we implement our resources and what type of resources we utilize within our classroom. So let me go ahead and show you. So one of the things I discovered is you want to teach your students about books, books from the library, regular books that you have on the different themes and different things. And I love teaching with themes. To me, everything is a theme. So I created these books because I started acknowledging that a regular book was very overwhelming for my students. It had too much on a page. I easily you know, got lost, they got lost. It was really, really difficult. And just like I mentioned with the one before about using uh, visuals, it's also great to mix it up, not just with 
like images and clip art and things like that, but to actually incorporate real life pictures. So I'm gonna show you this simple book about November and it doesn't have to be complicated. It could be fairly easy. So let me go ahead and show you about this one. So this one was about November and it had, um, November has 30 days. November is the 11th month of the year. November is, the season is fall. So we talk about fall. Then we identify some of the things that happen, right? So in, sometimes in fall, it gets cold. Um, falls the harvest times and vegetables and fruits are picked. So again, if you notice, there's very minimal destruction. It's very to the point and this can help your students. So for those students who can read, this is great. For those students who benefit from that actual picture, it's great. But it's also, I'm gonna tell you why I love teaching with themes. It's because I love, love, love teaching my students about the real world out there. One of the biggest deficiencies for students with autism is their social skills and their, their knowledge to relate with the real world. So what better way to teach them with real life photographs and real life things to generalize the concepts on what's truly happening out there. So this is a great way to differentiate. Again, you're reading about book, you're still teaching them reading and you can apply all those reading strategies. You can do reading comprehension. You can use it for your nonverbal kids. You know, for example, if I was using this one, I would say, point to the baby picking up the pumpkin, right? And so now you can have that nonverbal student go straight over here, maybe show it right in front of them and say, hey, where's that baby picking up that pumpkin? Can you touch the baby? So now you're building vocabulary, you're building language, and you're getting interaction from that student. So, and for then the kid right next to him, maybe that peer who can read, you're gonna say, hey, Johnny, can you do me a favor? Can you read this sentence for me? So now that's going to be a great way. And if you want to incorporate concepts of print, you can do that as well using the same exact resource. So I would say, okay, where's the beginning of the sentence and where do we end, right? What is the punctuation at the end of the sentence? So there's so many ways you can mix this up and incorporate these tools all together. So let me keep showing you. So I told you, I showed you this one, right? So this is one of them. And then I have something like this one, which again has those pictures um, and it's talking about Thanksgiving. So this one was a little bit of a more of a higher level, but it still talked about everything about the history. So yes, I could read a social studies book and I could grab a book from the library, but my goal as a teacher is to make sure that my students truly engage in the content, want to pay attention, and this particular book actually has an adaptive book to it and an interactive book. So they do have visual icons and I don't have it right here with me, but I wanted to show you anyways. They actually have a square and a visual icon that the student is going to match. So if you wanted to make it not just a read aloud book, but an interactive book, then they can do that on their own time. You can incorporate it in independent work as well. So this is a great way to have another way to teach these different concepts. Now let me show you another concept of how you can differentiate. So I absolutely love adaptive books. One of the biggest things that I have seen as I you know, consult with other teachers and work with teachers is that if you have a book center, you need to make sure that the books are engaging, that there's interaction with the books. A lot of times when I see the students and I observe students to consult, I realize that yes, they have a book center and they have regular books from the library, which we would find all across the world in all the stores, but the students are just doing something like, tell me if I'm right, just flipping through the pages, they're ripping the pages, they're not really interacting with the book or even trying to pay attention to the book. So instead I learned when I was in the classroom to utilize what we called adaptive books. And these are amazing. Now you can teach the same concept in different differentiated levels. And that's really what you have to keep in mind. Maybe a student can only match. Okay. Or maybe you are asking them to read the sentence and then they're going to grab their visual icon, or you have a student who actually is learning the words and you want to do that. So let me go ahead and show you what this looks like. It actually is a blank one and they have to identify the different colors, right? So they're going to actually have to read. So notice how you can do the same concept differentiated. And yes, you can absolutely get this resource, but you can also make some of these things in your classroom. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, somebody asked me, what if I don't have to do the comb? You know what? When I didn't have this beautiful machine, I just used to put those loose binder rings and that's what I had it. Um, somebody actually also recommended that they use yarn and they just tie it up. Um, 
Some of them have it loose and they just put it in a basket and independent work. That's gonna work too. So don't feel obligated to have to make it this fancy, but know that you can utilize these resources in different ways. So again, this is a perfect example of you doing the same skill, but with different formats to address the different needs in your classroom, okay? Because you don't want anybody being excluded. Here's another one, um, again, letter matching. So I used to do these two because these are great independent tasks. Um, Sometimes people ask me, well, do I keep it for, you know, I used to keep mine for a week. One, because at the beginning of the week, the students are introduced to the tool. And number two, because as the week continues, now they know what to expect and they become more independent. And the more independent they become, the more reinforcement I give to make sure they feel motivated to keep working. So in this one, for example, they have to match the uppercase letter to the lowercase letter. So these are the visual cards. And again, you can do this in um, teacher time. You can do this as a whole group. Like if I give this choices and I was doing this, this is the letter G. Can somebody find the lowercase G? So now you're teaching upper and lowercase, but also making it interactive. So think about the difference of just, you know, one of the things that I try to stay away, and it doesn't mean that I don't do it, is worksheets. Yes, you can use worksheets in a self-contained classroom. You actually might need it because that's good data to keep. And it's you know showing proof of all the work because you don't keep copies of this, right? When they do it, unless you're tracking data for it. But this is another great way to keep students engaged. I just feel like it's more hands-on. They get to manipulate, they get to move. And it's not just that pencil, which I've learned a lot of our students absolutely hate. So here's a perfect example. If a student is maybe learning the letters and they're tracing the letters, maybe I would say, first, let's write your worksheet, right? Let's do our work. And then you get to do it this way, which is a little bit more fun and more hands-on. So again, showing your students different modalities is gonna target the differentiated levels in your classroom. And at the same time, you're gonna keep them more engaged. And I showed, I told you guys, I love, love themes. So like this one, it's obviously for the holidays, it is stockings, um, but you can find them anyway, because I just found that at the beginning, I kept things basic, but as the time goes on, there's always a theme to celebrate or something you can teach. You're gonna be able to use your themes to tap into your students, what I like to call instead of obsessions, but your expertise field. So they're experts in whatever you may call it an obsession. So this is a great way to kind of tune into all these different kids and they feel empowered and they wanna be engaged. And it keeps learning also changing. So even though you're teaching the same concepts, the fact that you're changing them based on theme, it's also gonna help them think that it's different when it's really not. So that's another great resource to utilize. And again, lastly, there's different models and we've talked about this. So in this one, trying to tackle the differentiated levels of your students, you can do this type of version, okay, where it says ICA heart shape. So for those readers, they're gonna read the sentence. For those who are just learning to match skills, they're just gonna look at the picture and identify the picture in your visual card. What I like about this one is that everything is all together, so you don't lose your pieces. Um, I say you don't lose your pieces. It doesn't mean your students might not lose their pieces. But here's another great way to incorporate some of these. So I really hope that this is some idea. The last thing I wanted to show you, and again, it comes to the aspect of when you're working with these students with disability, always keep in mind to differentiate. You can do the same skills, you can use themes, and you can incorporate. And this is another perfect example. Let me just find the... Um, the matching. Okay, so here is file folders. We all love file folders. And I wanted to show you the two different, oops, let me do it the right way. Hold on. Oops, this way and this way. So here is the same actual activity, but in two different levels. So the first one is for your students to actually, look at that, we're going to label. So again, for your students who can read, you wanna be able to use the same skill. Maybe you taught it in whole group. Maybe you've been working on this for dance giving in particular, and they're going to match the words to the right image. But you may still have those kids who are not there yet reading. So you wanna do it maybe in a matching, doing one-to-one -one correspondence. And if your student's finding 10 objects too much, you can even divide this particular activity into two different folders. 
So you can also have that option that instead of being one folder, it's actually two folders. So keep that in mind as well as you are making these things. This is just another option. There is different folders and resources that I've created to utilize with students. You have beginning sounds, for example. So again, using the same pictures that you might have used, and I'm just gonna show you real quick. And you know, you can utilize it for the sound. So these were Thanksgiving matching. Um, for those kids who too much, it's just too much content. You can also, like I said, split them into two folders rather than one. So I much rather give them two separate folders to work on that activity, just to kind of keep going. So I wanted just, again, to take today to, in the spirit of the holidays, review some of the resources that I've used with students with um, autism in a self-contained classroom that have been very beneficial. Two, one, build vocabulary. Two, generalize concepts. Three, learn about real life experiences. And four, start becoming more independent. If your centers are requiring that much prompting and that much more hands-on, maybe your centers are not really addressing pushing for independent skills. So we have to start asking ourselves as educators, what can I do to help myself and the classroom and my students and my staff to become more independent, be more engaged? To me, teaching with the themes and making more hands-on interactive activities has definitely been one of this. And these are just some of the resources I hope in the near future to make other videos to help you become a better self-contained teacher. Thank you guys and have a wonderful holiday.